So we're going to be talking about hyperbolas. A hyperbola is a conic section, which means if you take a cone and another cone, so I'll just draw this very terribly right here. So picture we have two cones in three-dimensional space and picture that we took a piece of paper and slice through them in a way that I can't really draw here but imagine if the paper were facing the screen so if it were flat against the screen and it sliced down through both of them when you slice down through both of them you would end up with a shape that looks like a parabola here and then in the bottom part, the part of the cone that would get sliced off would leave a shape that looks like a parabola here. This is much easier to see in person, but if you could just use your imagination to pretend that you slice straight across these two cones, you would end up getting these two parabolas out of the shape that's cut out. And a hyperbola represents these two parabolas occurring at the same time. And it looks something like this when you actually draw it out. You can have two vertical parabolas like this or two horizontal parabolas like this. The vertical scenario occurs when we have the formula y minus k quantity squared over a squared minus x minus h quantity squared over b squared equals 1. It's vertical when we have the larger, sorry, not larger. <laughs> it's vertical when we have the y value first. So when we're subtracting x, x comes second, y is first, so it's a vertical hyperbola. In this case, the x comes first. It's x minus y. Since x is first, it's a horizontal parabola. Uh, hyperbola, I apologize. Both of these are hyperbolas. So... Let me just say that one more time very quickly to let it sink in. When y comes first, we have uh, vertical hyperbolas. And when x comes first, we have horizontal hyperbolas. So, there's a few things to note here. When we dealt with an ellipse, we said a was the larger value and b was the smaller value. That is not the case when you deal with, an, with a hyperbola. With a hyperbola, a is always the value that is under the first fraction, meaning the positive fraction. So in this case, we're subtracting the x, the y comes first, a has to be under the y because the y is first. In this case, we're subtracting the y, so the x is first, which means a has to be under the x. So always remember, with an ellipse, a has to be greater. With a hyperbola, a has to be the first denominator. From there, we still have the same definitions we do for an ellipse. The vertices, covertices, and foci. But in this case, to find the vertices for a vertical hyperbola, we are still going to be taking h, comma k, meaning the center, if you can really call it that. So basically the center of the hyperbola would be here or here. It doesn't really make sense to call it that, but it, it technically is. So if we take that h, comma k value, and we add and subtract a to the y values, that is how we find the vertices for a vertical hyperbola. But when we have a horizontal hyperbola, we take h comma k and we add and subtract a to the x values. 
The covertices are basically a couple of points here and here, as well as here and here. It's, it's a bit odd to think about. They're not actually on the hyperbola, but we'll get to it in a moment how it all works out. They're essentially used for graphing. So our vertices, just to use a different color here, our vertices are just like the vertices on a parabola. They're these points here and here. But the covertices, which I'll put in green, are these points that are just like off to the side of the hyperbolas. It's a bit odd how it works out, but essentially when we graph, we'll need to know all four because we're going to use a method that will essentially have us create this box shape and then drawing two diagonal lines, we'll be able to find the, the graphs of the hyperbola that fit those diagonal lines following from these boxes. Again, this will make more sense in a moment, but that's essentially what's happening here. And now finally, the foci, which I already have drawn here in black, are given from the formula c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Remember, for an ellipse, it was subtraction, now it's addition. And the foci are found when you take a vertical hyperbola and you add and subtract c to the y value of that center. And they're found when you take a horizontal hyperbola. I believe I keep saying parabola and I apologize. It's, it's like a tongue twister saying horizontal hyperbola and vertical hyperbola. So again, when you're finding a vertical hyperbola or horizontal hyperbola, you add and subtract c to the y value for a vertical, and you add and subtract c to the x value for a horizontal. And just really quick, we're just going to make a quick note here. We say that the definition of a hyperbola is the set of all points well, sorry, the set of points such that the difference of their distances from the foci is constant. So remember for an ellipse, we said if you take the two foci and you draw their distances to one point on the ellipse and add them together, it'll be the same distance for any other point on the ellipse. Well, with the hyperbola, if you take a point on the hyperbola and you draw the distance from one focus point to that point and then from the other to that point and you subtract these, difference, uh, these distances, it'll be the same value as any other point on the hyperbola. That seems a bit odd because this is going off toward infinity. So it seems a bit difficult to think about how this point off to infinity will have the same difference of the distances of these two foci, but it does end up working out that the distance will always be the same when you subtract them. Okay, so enough talking about the definitions and the formulas. Let's actually get into drawing this. But, I apologize, there is one more definition. <laughs> so, one quick process to drawing these, we have to add one more step, is to graph a hyperbola, you need to know about those two lines that I was mentioning earlier. So if you remember earlier in the video, I drew a box based on the covertices and the vertices. And I said we would draw two lines 
like so. And then we would get the graph of our hyperbola from there. So in order to do this, we actually need to find the equations of those lines. So to find those equations of those lines, we're going to actually define those lines as asymptotes. So the hyperbola, the way it's drawn to look like this, if we're dealing with a vertical one, for instance, it doesn't just have a shape that's out of nowhere. What's going on is there is a slant asymptote that looks like this and another slant asymptote that looks like this. Remember, whenever you're dealing with an asymptote, your graph follows it. The shape of your graph approaches but never actually reaches that asymptote in most cases. So that's what's happening with these hyperbolas. We have two asymptotes and we need to find their values. So whenever you have a vertical hyperbola, the equation of the asymptotes is found by taking y equals plus or minus a over b. Remember, a is the uh, square root of the value in the first denominator, the first fraction. So we have y equals plus or minus a over b times x minus h, all plus k. And if we have a horizontal hyperbola, we have y equals plus or minus b over a times x minus h, all plus k. So we will find all of the previous information. We'll find these asymptotes, the two of them, based on whether it's a vertical or horizontal hyperbola. And then we'll put all of that information together and then draw the curves that best fit that information. Okay, this was a lot. Now let's actually get into going through this process. So we want to graph y squared over 64 minus x squared over 36 equals 1. The first thing that we should note here is that y comes first. Since y is the positive fraction and x is the negative fraction and it's equal to 1, so we don't have to move anything around or divide or multiply or anything like that, this tells us since y is first, it's a vertical hyperbola. I can't really get this drawn. <laughs> okay, so now that we know it's vertical, that'll let us check that we've done the work right at the end. Okay, from here, we now know that a, or a squared technically, is always the value underneath the first fraction. So in this case, a squared is 64. If you take the square root of each side, we get a equals plus or minus 8. We really only care about the 8. The plus or minus isn't a big deal. And also, we know that b squared is equal to the value in the denominator of the fraction that's being subtracted, so it's 36. So we'll take the square root of each side, which gives us b equals plus or minus 6. And finally, from here, we can find that center point to base our vertices, covertices, and foci off of. And to find that center, I'm going to put this in quotes because... I mean, as you could see from the drawings earlier, the center isn't really part of the hyperbola. It's just something to base everything off of. The center is h comma k, where h is what's being subtracted from the x, and k is what's being subtracted from the y. In this case, h is 0, and k is 0. So... Now that we have this, we can begin by finding our vertices. Because it's a vertical hyperbola, 
The vertices are going to be found by adding and subtracting a or 8 to the y values of the center. So we have 0, 0, plus or minus 8. So the vertices are at 0, plus or minus 8. The covertices are found by adding and subtracting b to the h value or the x value of the center which gives us 0 plus or minus 6 comma 0 or just plus or minus 6 comma 0 and the foci we find with the formula c squared equals a squared plus b squared so c squared equals 64 plus 36, which gives us c squared equals 100. And taking the square root of each side, we get c equals plus or minus 10. And to find the foci, we add and subtract c to the same value we did to the vertices which is the y value, so we get 0, 0, plus or minus 10. So we get 0, plus or minus 10. And now that we have this, we just need to find the asymptotes and we can begin our graph. So to start off here, Remember the asymptotes, we said if you're dealing with a vertical hyperbola, then you use the formula y equals plus or minus a over b times x minus h all plus k, which gives us y equals plus or minus a, we said is 8, over b is 6, times x minus 0 plus 0 and simplifying we get y equals plus or minus 8 over 6 simplifies down to 4 over 3 when we divide the top and bottom by 2 all times x okay there's a lot of information to fill in here so the first things we should start off with are the vertices and covertices. So the vertices are at 0, comma, plus or minus 8. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm going to go two more because of the foci. We'll need those in a little bit. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So our vertices are at 0, 8 and 0, negative 8. Our covertices are at plus or minus 6, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now with that, we now want to create a box. This is going to seem a bit weird, but essentially if we were to draw a dotted line vertical, through each of the points on the x-axis, like so, and then a horizontal dotted line through each of the points on the y-axis, like so, we would get this box here. And it just so happens that our asymptotes 
y equals plus or minus 4 thirds x, so y equals 4 thirds x and y equals negative 4 thirds x, are going to pass directly through the diagonals of, these bo of this box. So for instance, it's not perfect, but one of our asymptotes is going to look like this. And the other will look like that. And now that we have this, we just want to draw the foci. Remember the foci are at 0, comma, plus or minus 10. So 0, comma, 10 and 0, comma, negative 10. <clears throat> And now we can draw the hyperbolas, or the hyperbola. So you start at your vertices, and you follow the asymptotes. So we start here, and we begin to stretch the graph until it approaches the asymptote, just like so. And then likewise here, we start here, we don't want to go past this horizontal dotted line. We just approach them, just like so. And these two parabola shapes combined give us the hyperbola of y squared divided by 64 minus x squared divided by 36 equals 1. It's a very long process. It takes a lot of practice to get used to it. But just remember, once you have all four vertices down, the covertices and regular vertices, you create that dotted rectangle. You put diagonal lines through the asymptotes. And then you start at your vertices and follow the asymptotes. And that's a hyperbola.